This is where a NAD aware and informed practitioner can help you out. And so you get the most out of it in the safest manner. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. A. Today I want to dive in to a little more depth on methylene blue and its clinical uses. So let's get after that. In North America, at least, it is a drug. It is a legend substance, which means it needs to come from a pharmacy of some kind or another through the prescription of a healthcare provider. Now, does that mean you can't find it online and buy it? Certainly not even find anything online and buy it. But one of the cautions is that a lot of the material that's online is not pharmaceutical grade, even though it's labeled that way sometimes. Number two, most of what is available is full of heavy metal toxicity and contamination. So we don't want to be putting that in our body. This is where it cross purposes. If we're going to try and help our mitochondria and our energy, and then we're poisoning them with the heavy metals, why do that? Getting it through a pharmacy source, the pharmacy will have to do quality control and quality control data and that the methylene blue has been checked for that. So it's another checkpoint in the system, if you will. The other thing is that you do have to be careful with certain drugs, especially drugs that manipulate serotonin and then there can be incompatibilities and safety issues around combining methylene blue and some of those drugs. But let's get into the positive end of this, which is why does it work and how is it so powerful in helping a person recover from, say, a post-viral illness or long-term chronic illness or drug-induced toxicities like chemotherapy-induced toxicities, chronic infectious illness, etc. How is it doing all of this? Well, the first thing that we want to think of is, in general, where does the methylene blue go and what kind of work does it do? So the work that it does, mostly at the level of mitochondria, and if you remember from many of our other discussions about mitochondria, our cells all have mitochondria at different levels, and the mitochondria are in the cell on the inside, and they help through oxidative phosphorylation to use nutrients to create more ATP energy units, okay? We normally have a nutrient side that is run by the nicotinamide family, the B3 family, and many people have heard of NAD or precursors to NAD as a supplement, and that's often used to help that side. Well, methylene blue actually can go and go in through kind of a side pathway and help to increase oxfos. So separate from the nutrient pathways, it helps to increase the mitochondrial output and helps to get the cell back on an equal energy footing to where it maybe used to be when you were healthier. Now, there's a couple of other reasons why this can be very useful, but that's the bottom line. That's the base of the way that works. But when we look a little bit deeper and we look at that, then there's another thing that improving the oxidative phosphorylation cascade, the energy producing cascade, does, and this is known as cellular respiration, where oxygen diffuses into the cell. It goes in and is used in oxidative phosphorylation, and then out the other side comes ATP energy units and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide diffuses out of the cell. So one of the things that happens when you put more oxygen in, which if I speed the mitochondria up, move more oxygen in, I'm going to naturally move more carbon dioxide out, and I'm going to help in establishing and keeping the pH balance inside and outside of the cell because carbon dioxide shifts pH to a more healthy and a more balanced sort of uh, pH balance. Now, that can improve a number of things, but one of the things that that whole process will trigger is it will speed up the uh, cell in making the little vesicles that take garbage out. So it helps to detoxify the cell, remove the garbage, right? Now, you take it back a step and you say, well, people will say, you know, it helps out, you know, with cell energy. That's what you just described. That kind of makes sense. The more the mitochondria work, the more energy I have. But then they'll uh, talk about, well, it can help also with more global things like detoxification or the production of immune cells. How does it do that? Well, it's the same mechanism, but it's just in particular tissues, such as the liver and the kidneys, when the mitochondria start working faster, 
if that cell is one of the cells that helps to create some of the detoxifying either enzyme systems or processing systems for toxins, etc., the cell will run faster and the detoxification will run faster as well. What about with your immune cells? Same thing. Your bone marrow, where the majority of immune cells are made, is very responsive. It's a, it's a high turnover, high metabolic tissue. It's very responsive to the effect of the mitochondria on the progenitor cells, the the sort of, you know, upstream waters of making all of your cell families, whether it's white cells, red cells, and all of the uh, specific immune cells that are made there. So if the mitochondria slow down there, you often have a slowdown in the output of all of these good cells. Well, that becomes incredibly important because if the marrow slows down, if the mitochondria can't get back online and they're affecting the bone marrow, we can't get these good cells to be produced again. And there's other the reasons why it's helpful in immunity, but that's just some big high-level sorts of things. So as far as the way it works, we want to think about helping the mitochondria to run faster. We want to think about moving O2 and CO2 in and out of the cell better, moving garbage out of the cell better, so to speak. And in specific tissues, if it's detoxification cells in the liver, or the kidneys, in the gut, etc. They're going to run faster. If it's the bone marrow and producing your immune cells, that'll run faster. If it's your brain and brain function, that will improve and run faster. And you probably will also uh, have a better movement of uh, things in and out of uh, your neurological tissues, which is very useful as well. Now, I mentioned earlier, but I just want to point out, if you're doing NAD or a precursor of nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN or NR, those things go in, you could say, on one side and help run the natural oxfos. The methylene blue comes in on the other side and supports it. So sometimes we have people doing both. We have to adjust the doses because you get two stimulants in there at one time. And sometimes that's great. And sometimes it's too much. You have to balance them out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it is a drug. I know that, you know, anything can be bought online, but that has always made it good. I did mention a lot of the product out there, the majority of the product is full of heavy metal toxicants that you don't need in your body. So it's just better not to do that. But the other reason to work with a practitioner is that the practitioner can decide what you're going to tolerate and help you adjust the doses. They can make sure you're not any medications that may be contraindicated with the use of methylene blue so you don't hurt, hurt yourself. But then also the clinical management of something like methylene blue, it's something that should come in for a particular time to help you recover and recover function. But in most people, it doesn't need to be there forever. And so the important part about that is that's a clinical determination, and it's best if that's made by someone who isn't you, who is healthcare provider, who is methylene blue aware. And I think that that's just really important for safety, et cetera. The final thing is that the healthcare provider can help you in combining it, as we said, maybe with NAD therapies or NAD support therapies, maybe with other therapies like photodynamic therapy as research with methylene blue. It's a very uh, good photodynamic activating agent. So that's one. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen is another that helps sort of that O2, CO2 turnover to help the mitochondria, et cetera. Maybe just global antioxidant support, cell membranes, where all kind of things that can go on. And this is where a NAD aware and in informed practitioner can help you out. And so you get the most out of it in the safest manner.